Well, thank you for joining us. It's 12.30 has uh, come and gone. Uh, we'll start this uh, promptly. First off, when I saw the fee structure for this uh, very expensive gas tax, fee tax hike, I was electrified. And speaking specifically to the electric vehicles, it charged me up. Uh, so let's let's look at this these details here. Uh, I did have an opportunity to invite Rivian Automotive. Uh, my initial plan was is to have them come to the Capitol Building, bring one of their trucks, do a couple test drives, and then head up to their plant to do a tour. Uh, I believe their trucks are at an event in uh, I think Las Vegas at some off-road event right now, so they couldn't join us here. Uh, but we can't have this discussion without talking about Illinois jobs, Illinois manufacturing, and literally the the normal. Rivian plant. Uh, so this is a $400 million investment that they've made, and they're talking about 1,000 jobs in Central Illinois. Uh, this is significant. We cannot uh, deny that that is important. Uh, but we also need to address uh, that this uh, current uh, gas tax, fee hike, and other hike uh, agenda going on by Governor Pritzker and some members of the General Assembly is out of control. Uh, according to Governor Pritzker's numbers, this is an over $40 billion tax hike. This will be the biggest tax hike Illinois has ever seen. And then let's just go into some of these specifics here. Uh, a 231% gas tax hike, higher driver's license fees, and you don't get your driver's license every single year, but you do renew your car registration every year. So there's a, a fee hike for your car registration. And then furthermore, this will go up by CPI every single year. So this is a, a fee hike for eternity. Every year for the rest of your life, your driver's license registration fees will go up according to Governor Pritzker's plan. We're talking about higher tobacco taxes. Already, uh, Illinois retailers are complaining about people going across the border uh, to buy tobacco. Uh, everyone in Illinois, lives an hour and a half or less from a state border. Most people live far or closer to the state border uh, than that. Uh, already, Illinoisans are fleeing Illinois to buy their tobacco products. Uh, let's go farther, shopping bag tax. So we're including a, a shopping bag to that tax to this, not just plastic, but also paper. Uh, this is something that will stifle retail, retail merchants. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. When I'm uh, driving home from session and I'm thinking about buying milk and eggs and uh, you know maybe bananas, uh, when I come home and see my wife, I will go in that store, and then I might go and I, I go through the uh, aisles of the checkout, and I might buy a pack of gum or some candy or something, and that's where the real profit is on those impulse buys. Uh, if there, we put this uh, tax, I will carry around cloth bags. But what about those days that I forget to have those bags in my car? Those are the days that I do not go in and stop for a convenience buy. And those are also the days that I'm not going to buy something extra, like a pack of gum or candy. And that's where the retailers are really going to lose out on this. Because if my wife's doing the shopping, she doesn't get impulse buys. Uh, we all know that, that the, the man gets the impulse buys. Uh, you know, but what's next on this uh, tax hike scheme? A streaming tax. Uh, literally, people are cutting the cord and going to a, a more digital way of viewing entertainment. Uh, a streaming tax is not the way to go. Uh, we already have some of the highest alcohol taxes in our region. Uh, literally, again, we, people live close to the border. They can go over the border, buy their tobacco, go buy a case of beer, and come on back over to Illinois. We don't see any of that revenue. Our local communities don't see any of that revenue. It's a big mistake to raise those taxes even higher. Uh, we're talking about adding a Uber or a, a ride-sharing tax. Uh, again, this is something that's just punitive, uh, and you know, in, in more, more so in urban areas, a parking tax. Uh, again, another punitive, regressive tax. Uh, so specifically, I want to point out the, the big ones, though. This gas tax is regressive. It hurts working families. It hurts uh, single parents. It hurts people that are trying to commute and get to their jobs. Uh, and then specifically, uh, I, you know, talking about this electric fee uh, going up to $1,000. Uh, now, this is something that I have a little bit of expertise on because my wife uh, drives a plug-in hybrid. So let me give you some of those numbers. Now, hers is, you know, just a plug-in Prius, uh, so she can only go 10 to 12 miles on a charge, and then it goes through a regular gas engine. Typically, on our workday, she gets almost to work on, on electric and then drives the rest of the way on gasoline and then drives away home on gasoline. Uh, this is not a situation where, uh, you know, we can complain about someone not, not paying their fair share because we effectively save about $175 on fuel costs a year because of this electric charging that we have, $175. How much of that goes to the current gas tax? 16 bucks. That's all. 
Uh, and we're talking about we have new uh, merging technology and we want to charge registration fees of thousand dollars per year I might add uh, the average uh, owner has a car for you know three four or five years that could be a five thousand dollar tax on top of an uh, already uh, expensive pr uh, purchase uh, something like that will you know we will shutter those type of in industries and people will move on and do something different uh, and that that's where the significance of that and then I just did some math on the way over here so give you an idea uh, a lot of electric cars are, are going about uh, four miles on a kilowatt. Uh, so if you are uh, someone who's commuting to work, uh, typically uh, if you're using an electric car, it's a little bit shorter. Most of the electric cars in the market are shorter range. There's only you know, one brand right now that is on the market that offers a longer range. Uh, Rivian would also be a longer range product, but right now the majority of those cars are much shorter range. Uh, so the average uh, mileage uh, per workday is 40 miles or less. And I would also argue that for the current crop of electric cars, those people are driving less than 40 miles a day. But let's use 40 miles as a good figure. That's 10 kilowatts a day. Uh, if you are an average homeowner and you're charging every night at home and you're racking up an extra 10 kilowatts a day and you're fairly efficient, you're paying 40 to 50% of your electric bill into taxes and fees. Electric car owners pay taxes on their electricity. They actually pay a higher percentage of their transportation costs to taxes than gasoline car owners. So just a, you know, a quick rundown there. Uh, the majority of a gallon of gas still costs to the product. Uh, and if we raise the taxes, even if we raise up to this scheme here where it's going to be about 60 cents a gallon, uh, that's still going to be a far larger uh, portion of your uh, gasoline bill to the gasoline product versus taxes. Whereas most people, the electric, electric bill is eaten up by supply charges, fees, and taxes than actual delivery of the actual product cost. Are you actually going to be paying about 50 40 50 percent are going to go to f uh, fees and taxes uh, instead of the, the gasoline. Uh, so give you an idea, they still pay taxes. They may not be uh, actually specifically going to roads, but you also can't forget that this is one percent of the market, and most of the current electric cars are smaller than your average gasoline cars. Uh, we're not considering Suburbans and Tahoes and things like that. Many of the electric cars, like the uh, Chevy Bolt, very small car, the Nissan Leaf, and others are small cars, lightweight cars. Uh, they're having less wear and tear on the roads than larger vehicles. Uh, the, and we're moving to a idea that we want to make our taxes, uh, you know, more graduated. It's the governor's talking about this, a fair tax. There is no tax that's more regressive than these fees and taxes the governor is proposing. So literally the governor is talking on both sides of his mouth, talking about raising uh, taxes uh, on the so-called rich, but he also wants to raise single mom's tax so she can just commute to work. Uh, so I, I'm going to introduce a couple of uh, couple people here. Again, this is Representative Alan Skillicorn from the 66th District, uh, represent up Elgin in the Crystal Lake area. And uh, which one of you guys wants to go first? You're jumping in. So uh, Darren Bailey from <coughs> Southern Illinois. Representative Darren Bailey from the 109th District, Southeast Illinois, and yes, I definitely have one of those districts that uh, border up with the southwest uh, section of Indiana. So, uh, you know, I was elected, I ran, uh, I was elected because of increased taxes in 2017 when uh, Illinois decided uh, to move ahead with this 32% uh, uh, tax increase, which raised 3.2 billion uh, new dollars. Uh, the people in my area said they had enough. So, you know, we're looking at uh, right now numbers with this uh, progressive tax, just the initial numbers and, and all these other taxes that are included, uh, you know, an initial, just a starting figure of $3.5 billion, which far exceeds uh, the 2017 uh, uh, tax increase. So uh, I've said it and I continue to say it, and I'm hearing the exact opposite from the other side of the aisle. Illinois has a spending problem. We do not have a revenue problem because we've got to stop this. We've, the hard work, the easy work is to go raise taxes and, and go tell the people that we did what we could do, but, uh, you know, hey, if you want your stuff, you've got to pay for it, so we raise taxes. That's the easy thing. The difficult work comes when we set together and we start prioritizing and holding government accountable and, uh, and in that way, working within our means. Uh, we start, we get our financial base solid, and then guess what? One of these days, just like uh, you out there, uh, just like we live as a family, uh, things get tight, we back off, we secure the position, and then we begin to grow again. And Illinois, unfortunately, 
uh, it, it continues to waver away from that position. So I will continue to fight for no taxes, none, no, no, no increases, no new, no new taxes, nothing, because Illinois families need relief. Because I'll tell you one business that is flourishing in the 109th district, that's the U-Haul business. So it's going to be very ex interesting to see uh, when this next um, uh, census comes up uh, the, the the effects of it but uh, and I and I'm dead serious about that the U-Haul business is definitely flourishing in our district so people are moving away I just had a conversation this morning with a mother a young mother of two she's divorced so she's basically uh, trapped here in Illinois with her children uh, buying groceries last night and just telling me the effects of that of uh, having to pay a high rent in her house because of high property taxes on and on and on and uh, ma making a decent wage, but uh, because of all these incurred taxes and the threat of what's to come, simple fact, they can't move, it's, it's not looking good. So uh, we have got to work together. So I just encourage everyone to call your representative, uh, both sides of the aisle, and, uh, and, 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 and tell them you're tired of this and you want something different. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I feel like this is a trap because the last guy always gets all the questions. But anyway, I want to echo everything that my colleagues have said here today that uh, raising taxes is a non-solution and a non-starter for me and uh, many, many, many of our colleagues that are on the Abraham Lincoln side of the aisle. I know one of the things that when we think about uh, the fair tax, when we think about the gas tax, ultimately this all circles back to an attack on middle class families and we make it more difficult for people to thrive here in the state of Illinois. And I think one of the things that we should do as far as state legislators, we, may, we ought to try to make life better for the citizens that live in our district. And I know that particularly where Darren and I are from, we're very rural, and I know that uh, my district is basically uh, 100 miles long and 60 miles wide, and we and I border the Wabash River. And a lot of these regressive taxes that we've seen have had severe consequences to our district. You know, uh, Pioneer Oil has left. Toyota is thinking about leaving. And just those two industries alone amount to millions and millions of dollars going from Illinois to, across the river to Indiana. I know just um, uh, the other day when we were uh, talking about the, uh, the progressive income tax, I know the Lidman uh, company. They aren't in my district, but they're just a few miles from my hometown, of, and uh, they're from Arcola. But this business has been in, in, the, in the East Central Illinois area for over 100 years, and I know that, that on an annual basis that they inject between 30 and $40 million into the local economy in Arcola, Tuscola, Douglas County, Coles County, in that area. And, and because they have almost 700 employees, that impacts literally the, the size of Arcola. There's 2,400 people that live there. And they would, the, the effect of their employment would, would, would uh, have an immediate effect on at least the size of that town, and it, far, it reaches far more than that. But I know that they're considering leaving just because the, it's just tax after tax after tax. And one thing that we have to all admit, the blue model of governing where we tax, borrow, and spend has left a disastrous trail from Connecticut to California. It has failed everywhere it's been tried. It's not, it hasn't worked, it's not working, and it will never work.